Travis is dead. Rose. I know. Episode 1 of True Detective Season 4 begins with a bang, posing riddles and issues that are both fresh and well-known due to their suggested connections to Season 1. The fourth episode of the critically acclaimed HBO TV series, which is set in Innis, Alaska, features Liz Danvers, played by Jodie Foster, as the main detective. Continuing the series' habit of introducing two key detective characters in each season, the show also brings in Callie Reese as Evangeline Navarro, whose complex connection with Danvers is virtually reminiscent of Hart's relationship with Cole in Season 1. The first episode of True Detective Season 4 dives right into the action by laying the groundwork for the show's central mystery. According to the story's opening storyline, some researchers who were employed by a facility in Ennis had vanished out of nowhere. When Navarro and Danvers try to piece together what happened to them, they discover more questions than answers that link the enigma to a terrible incident in their history. Why did the animals act in that way? In the first episode of True Detective Season 4, what were the deer fleet? from. The Night Country poster features Callie Reese and Jodie Foster, with Foster's Liz Danvers in the middle. Hildred Castain's statement, Because we do not know what beast the night dreams when its hours grow too long for even God to be awake, opens True Detective Season 4, Episode 1. What happens next indicates that the event is taking place against the backdrop of the year's final sunset before a protracted period of darkness descends upon the area. A herd of deer senses something in the air and abruptly rushes towards a cliff in fear, while a hunter gets ready for the polar night and tries to track down a deer. The herd's response appears to be a visual representation of Castain's words, even though the show does not specifically say what happened to them. In Alaska, when the sun sets ahead of the protracted dark season, the deer sense the approach of the monsters that rule when the hours grow too long for even God to be awake. The deer's response also serves as a kind of premonition for what might have happened to the Tsalo researchers. In the final seconds of the episode, all of the researchers are found frozen, and they all appear to be extremely afraid of something, indicating that they fled their research facility after witnessing something out of a horror movie. Similar to the deer in the first image, they were undoubtedly compelled to flee in fear and hasten to their own deathbeds upon witnessing what Beast the Night dreams. Why did Twist and Shout actually concern Danvers so much? Why was Danvers nervous about the Beatles' song? The Beatles' Twist and Shout makes Danvers more nervous as she arrives at the Tsalo facility to look into the disappearance of the researchers. She hurries inside to turn the facility off. Her response implies there is more to the song than meets the eye, even if she tries to defend her hatred of it by claiming she is not a fan of the Beatles. Stacy briefly experiences flashbacks to a horrible incident from her past when Danvers almost crashes into her car much later in the episode. Danvers' daughter claims in a different scenario from True Detective Season 4, Episode 1, that they never discuss a specific drunk driving incident. Future episodes of the show will probably shed more light on the connections between these incidents, but Danvers' response to the Beatles' song may be related to the incident her daughter is referring to. Perhaps Twist and Shout was on in the car when Danvers and her daughter were in that horrific drunk driving incident. Danvers' reaction to Twist and Shout may have been triggered by memories of the traumatizing incident. What were the Salo researchers seeking? The task of the researchers is not as simple as it first appears. In response to Danvers' question, Peter explains that the researchers' search in Alaska was focused on finding the origin of life. But given the circumstances surrounding their demise and potential ties to the murder of Annie Misu Kautok, their study may be a front for something much darker. According to Annie's case file, she bore the identical twisted spiral markings that Rust Cole and Marty Hart discovered on Yellow King cult victims in Season 1 of True Detective. Thus, if the researchers were involved in Annie's death in any way, they may have been associated with the cult of the Tuttle family. Whose tongue was it anyway? Annie and the Tsalo researchers are connected by the severed tongue. Along with seeing that the researchers have mysteriously vanished, the delivery man also discovers a disembodied tongue on the ground. After discovering dents on the tongue, Danvers speculates that the original owner may have been a local Inupiaq woman who used her tongue to lick threads to mend fishing nets. Given that Annie Masu Kautok was an Alaska native and that she was murdered with her tongue severed, it is possible that Danvers discovered Annie's tongue within the Tsalo facility. But given that Annie was murdered two years before to the researchers' disappearance, it's odd that its deterioration indicates that it was only exposed to the elements for two days. What does she's awake mean? The she's awake 
theme from True Detective Season 4, Episode 1, alludes to the supernatural aspects of the program. True Detective never went beyond into the paranormal, even if Season 1 featured some metaphysical overtones and even included Lovecraftian literature. In contrast, the first episode of Season 4 prominently features metaphysical tale aspects, particularly in Navarro's military memory in the scene where Rose is guided by Travis Ghost towards the frozen bodies of the researchers. The She's Awake motifs in True Detective Season 4 Episode 1 also seem to draw attention to the supernatural elements of the program, as if to suggest that Annie may have awakened to exact retribution on those responsible for her death. The awakening of Annie might also be interpreted as a metaphor for how her case file will reopen and compel Danvers and Navarro to reveal the larger plot that is related to her demise. What became of Annie? The deaths of the researchers are connected to Annie's murder case. Peter is informed by Danvers that Annie's body was initially discovered near the village's edge by Navarro. Her wounds were fashioned like stars, and she had been stabbed 32 times with an unknown weapon. Annie's murder case remained unsolved, and the weapon was never located. Danvers also says that Annie was an activist who, by speaking out against the mining industry's practices, had infuriated a lot of individuals in the business. Even though her killers have never been apprehended, Danvers appears to believe that her detractors in the mining sector may have planned her assassination. The tongue Danvers finds in the Tsalo facility may be Annie's, as her tongue was severed during the murder and was never located by the detectives working on her case. The court files images of Annie also show that she had the twisted spiral mark engraved on her body. This could imply that the Yellow King cult from True Detective Season 1 had some sort of connection to her death. How come the polar bear is behaving? Inuit mythology's polar bear serves as the foundation for True Detective Season 4. Inuit people view polar bears as powerful, mystical creatures. Inuit mythology also contains stories of a polar bear god named Nanuk, who blessed hunters before they went on their hunts and punished those who broke taboos. In the first scene of True Detective Season 4, Danvers wakes up to hear, she's awake, in her nightmares. She then discovers a plush bear on the floor. Navarro discovers a polar bear in the middle of the road a short while later. Danvers also makes light of Navarro in an early scene when she cynically claims that the woman's tongue was revealed to her by her spirit animal. These scenes from the first episode of True Detective Season 4 raise the possibility that the polar bear is a revered spiritual totem, which motivates Navarro and Danvers to uncover the truth about Annie's death. Given that Nanook and Inuit culture also stands for peace between humans and nature, the polar bear may serve as a reminder to the researchers to mend the equilibrium that their covert, malevolent actions upset. More information regarding the ties between the polar bear, the disappearance of the researchers, and Annie's murder will probably be revealed in later episodes. What information about the murders do the matching coats tell us? Annie and the researchers are connected by the same garment. Foster, Jody in the Land of True Detective Knights. Danvers discovers that one of the researchers is wearing the same jacket as Annie in one of the photos as she quickly scans through all the data she has obtained regarding the researchers and Annie's death. This establishes a a connection between Annie's murder and the researchers, their work at the Tsalil facility, and their deaths. Annie was most likely murdered after finding out the truth about the researchers' true intentions at the institution, even if the matching court records do not provide any insight into how the two cases, which at first glance seem unrelated, may be related. In what way did Travis seem to Rose? It's possible that Travis's appearance gave away what caused his demise. In True Detective Season 4, Rose speaks with Travis. Despite knowing that Travis is deceased, Rose does not act startled by his apparition, implying that she has either seen him previously or frequently sees the souls of the dead. Another indication that the spiritual and material worlds are working together to lead the characters to the solutions to the murders occurs in True Detective's first Season 4 episode, when Travis Ghost directs Rose to the frozen corpses of researchers. Travis's appearance might also imply that the killings of Annie and the researchers had anything to do with his passing. Who and how killed the researchers? The researchers exited the Tsalil facility, but how and why? In True Detective Season 4, law enforcement is digging up the frozen scientist. The researchers are depicted encased in ice in the climactic scene of True Detective Season 4, Episode 1. Strangely, the researchers are naked, even if the identity of their perpetrator is still a mystery. This could indicate that they had to remove their clothing due to severe hypothermia. Alternatively, the murderer's ritual included forcing them to remove their garments. Whatever the cause, one cannot help but marvel at how the researchers, who were aware of Alaska's severe temperatures, managed to find themselves outside the institution. 